So I got some new parts in the mail. What do I have here? That's going to be the display. These are wires. That looks like probably throttle cable, maybe. We will see. And the pedal assist. Handlebar throttles. Looks like various wiring. Oh, yeah, brake, uh, brake levers and cutoffs. And controller. And even, and even some instructions, which no doubt will come in handy. Okay, and then a couple of things I want to clear up about my last one. Okay, so I had several comments, and, and I do appreciate every comment I get. Any little help is great. But one of the comments was the uh, key was in the off position. So, <clears throat> oh, I didn't even fix that. The key was in the off position. So on this battery, the key brings up this lock right here and down up and down and it doesn't seem to affect the power here i've had testers on it what does turn that on is a switch right here this switch doesn't seem to be affected by the battery it also has it also has a uh, a little meter here that when you push it and it's on you, you light up. So let's try the key. Turn the key on. And nothing. Turn the key off and the battery on. And let's see. Then it lights up with the key off. Now then the key on. Same thing. Battery switch off with the key still on. Battery switch off, key is on, nothing. So the key doesn't seem to affect it on this battery. I understand there are some that it, it does. The other thing was is that, oh, I've got the uh, display off, but it's a long press and up to several seconds. And I understand that on my video I was just touching it for an instant and that was just kind of like uh, I was just showing you that I had pushed the button I, I should have pushed it properly so you would all understand and from now on I, I'll if it takes a long press I'll press it long on the video so with all that said I appreciate your comments. <clears throat> I hope to get many, many more as I go through this box of goodies and install this guy onto the bike. I have good hopes. I think we're going to make it. And then I'll wind up with an e-bike that cost a whole lot less than expected. But, you know, since these guys treated us so well, I, I do plan on ordering a brand new bike from them again. And, but I'm going to get this one working first. Okay, I hope you guys follow along with this and uh, learn something, as I do or can comment and teach me something that you already know. So an open dialogue like that would be really wonderful. And I'm gonna do this in between these uh, videos of, of a more philosophical nature, exploring the, 
the nature of the universe, the, the reality that we perceive. And I've got a trusty helper here, Miss Bonnie Boo. And, of course, when I need more advanced help, I call my wife, Debbie, and she's real good with this kind of stuff. So, got plenty of help now. So, I've got my bike situated on the end of a sawhorse. I'm laying out my stuff. That's all the stuff out of the box. What I plan on doing is going through these instructions, matching the wires to all the to all the uh, inputs, and then uh, testing it. I've got this wire here that's running to the motor, so I'm gonna bench test the whole thing before I install it. Okay, so the first one is the motor phase. And these go, they're the big wires and they go to the motor. And they're uh, color coded. They're uh, yellow, green, and blue. And I think what those are doing is they are, uh, they, they connect inside the battery to different size uh, windings to cause different speeds so we've got that next is these phase phase wires the ones that are going to go to the controller to give the signal to power which wire we want and they power these things in order uh, <clears throat> to cause a rotation now, I'm not sure if I'm describing this the way it actually works, but this is my rough understanding. So in here, we're seeing similar colored wires, a yellow, a green, a blue, but we've got extras. We've got a couple of power wires and a couple of ground wires and a green wire. No, that green wire's there too. So, okay, so it's... Basically, it looks like two grounds and two hots. Now, I don't think you can trust the red to be positive and the black to be negative outright, but, and we will test those things, but that's the way I'm seeing it. And so those are going to go on this wire here that is going down to the bike motor. Coming up here. I got them clamped on just for demonstration. And I've got it pulled back where I can look at the wires. Sorry about that. Set you up here steady. There we go. So I've got it set up where I can pull back and look at the colors of the wires and make sure that the pins are all in the same order in this plug as they are in that plug. So I'm going to get to that right now. Okay, so <clears throat> I've got the controller tester hooked up to the motor. And it's showing that all the uh, Hall effect sensors are working. When I turn it backwards. So it's probably programmed backwards. Okay, so moving on. Now I believe these guys should light up when you go when you're turning it really fast, which I'm not really turning it fast, but I have to research that a little more. But first test looks good. And how I've got it set up is I've got the leads from the tester running color coded into the leads, moving down into the uh these are the, the thick wires moving down into the motor. The thin wires are in here, and I checked to make sure all the color codes are matching up 
inside the connectors. And <clears throat> those wires are all coming. They've got them located here uh, where it says the motor hall effects. Let's see if I can do this. Come on, sit right there. So, <clears throat> so it says the uh, main phases in the controller, controller hall effects, uh, motor hall lines, motor phase lines, and throttle brake levers. So these are the ones I'm using right now. The, the main phase lines for the motor and the motor hall effect lines seem to be testing good. So I'm just working this uh, off, releasing the grip from the handlebar by running a screwdriver up in there. And working it around. And eventually I'll get it off. Like I said, if you got an uh, air compressor, you pull this lip off, you spray air in there and that thing will jump off. So right now I'm just rolling it back onto itself. Probably a good shot there, right? So just kind of pulling it back. End up like that. <clears throat> one down, one to go. I need this break off. So with the hand grip off, I slid the new one on and uh, the old one right here, I've just got to line the slots up. There's a slot, boy the light's not very good right there is it, but there's a slot, and a slot in that one, a slot in that one, get them all lined up. Uh, tight as far as you can and then line them up Okay, so I showed you what it was like to take that off, the hand grip off with, without any air, and just with the hook tool or screwdriver, and then that's what it looked like with with air. It comes off a whole lot easier. So there's a groove in this outside sleeve. There's a groove on this locking sleeve. There's a groove in the whole hand grip right here. It's going to help to release the cable from the disc. Let me show you that. Okay, so on the, uh, the brake caliper, there is a Allen screw right there. So we're just going to release that screw, just unscrew it just a tiny bit. Just enough to move the cable. So once we can move the cable through, boy, it's hard to do everything one-handed here. <clears throat> Okay, so once we get the cable sliding through it, then this piece 
gives us a whole lot more range. So with the cable loose from the caliper, everything is just sloppy loose here. So we can just find, as we squeeze the, so we squeeze the handle, we, we can see the cable just fits right in this little piece right here. So it just goes in like that. So you just take that off <clears throat> and then you can put the new one on. And let's see the new one is up there. Okay, so you see the socket right there. I'm gonna put my flashlight down. So, I know, sorry about the lighting. So this little knob, lead knob, is going to go into that hole. Then it's going to feed into that groove. And this groove, there's three grooves. They all got to be lined up. So they all go together. Like that. Now then, I can go down below and tighten my cable. <clears throat> so to tighten the cable, I'm just going to... Uh, it's not going to take a whole lot of force, but I'm just going to pull the cable... Making sure everything goes back together correctly. Oops. I'm going to lift the little arm a little bit and then tighten the cable down. You want to get the cable good and snug. Then I'm just going to check and make sure that my my wheel is pretty snug, and then just check and see if I roll. It rolls. It's got a little drag, but that's going to be okay, I believe. It's very little. Any further adjustment will be up at the top. So the uh, hand grip now. Has a little set screw right there. Just making sure it's not interfering inside here. So I'm just going to shove that on and then tighten that set screw. Okay, so first of all, what we've got this little tester picked it up on Amazon. You need to focus there. It's really cheap, it's under 20 bucks. And you can test basically everything on the bike with it. You can do it all with a, a, a multimeter, but this this is a much easier man. Back probing some of those little uh, pins are very difficult. So you can you can check to make sure the uh, motor works, the controller works, the the brake shutoff works. Everything that's on the bike you can check with this. Now the instructions, you've got to kind of, uh, you've got to kind of do your, uh, your own work in your mind to figure that out. The same way with the instructions for the controller, hooking the controller up. Let's, let's look at that. Okay, so on the controller, it, they, you know, this is done by, uh, Chinese, no doubt, and their translation is not very good. 
Then also is, you know, there's no standards with the e-bike manufacturing. So everything is a little different, but it's all the same. What I mean by that is the color codes and stuff will be different. And sometimes even the number of wires and things, but this is what I've figured out so far. Let's see if I can find a place to do this. <clears throat> I guess that's best. Okay, so to start out with the um, focus, focus. Okay, so the top one, these are the the battery supply coming in to the controller. Then the next are the the phase wires going to the motor. Uh, these are pretty pretty uh, standard. The the positive and the negative. The green, the blue, and the yellow, those are all pretty much the same on every bike from what I've understood. Now everything runs on a five volt signal. So all the signals are, are five volts. So <clears throat> you've got a, a signal wire and then the power. So, not all of these colors work out. Because what we've got, let's see on this one, sometimes you have to kind of um, make an educated guess. Let me see if I can tell you what, I, give you an example here. Let's see about these three wires here the uh, motor hall sensor. Let's look at that. So on the uh, hall sensors, they're going to come in with these little wires here. And they're going to match and pretty much the colors are, are spot on there. But other things like this brake control You've got black and white, and then red and blue. And let's see what they say on the instructions here. <clears throat> okay, so what I'm trying to say basically is that the colors that they give here aren't always correct. So it's obvious that the brake switch is red and blue because they come right off of the brake. And so that's kind of how you have to work, work things out. And then the only really thing you have to worry about is connecting something to the battery power that should be a five volt um, a, a five volt signal. So as long as you're not connecting anything to the battery voltage, except for the voltage going into the machine, the red and black wire, or no, the yeah red and black wire. If you've got <clears throat> The positive and negative coming from the battery, that's the only thing that should have full voltage, as far as I can find. Everything else has to come out at five volts. So you connect everything and you can check to see uh, what the voltage is with your, with your uh, multimeter. So if you're reading five volts, you can pretty much connect it to stuff without worrying about it. You connect anything else to that uh, high voltage from the battery and you're probably gonna fry the unit. 
Something I want to say about this green wire. This green wire, let's find it here, right here. There's two of them, two green wires. Hope you can see that. So those two green wires can fit together. And what those are, are they, they're, sometimes they're called learning wires, sometimes they're called programming. And on this one, they are called, where did I just see that? Recognition motor phase. What that does is <clears throat> it makes the, the, mo the wheel run forward or backwards. And if you set everything up and the motor wants to run backwards, plug that in. First of all, turn the power off, plug it in, turn the power on, then turn the power off, power off and unplug it. And now leave it unplugged and the, the motor will have changed directions and the programming will be stuck unless you do it again. Next time you plug that wire in, the motor will change its recognition and run backwards. I hope that describes that pretty well. I don't think so, but... That's... <clears throat> Maybe I can think of a different way in a minute. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is... I've already changed the brake sensors here and put the throttle on. I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, display on and uh, fish all the wires through.